Hi, I'm Konstantin Stepanov, and today I will tell you about the bridges. The bridge in a game of pool is your support arm, and a lot depends on its stability. There are numerous bridges in pool. Today we will review seven different types, and we will start with the most basic one, it's called the open bridge. Let's look at the right way of setting it up. Lay your palm on a table and spread your fingers as wide as possible. Now raise the fist joints of your index and middle finger and lean your thumb tight to the upper part of your index finger. These two fingers experience quite a lot of pressure that makes the bridge firm and prevents Q-stick from wobbling. Next, we'll lay the Q-stick in the gutter and start aiming. Generally speaking, the open bridge is used in almost every situation where you can freely place your palm on the table. For instance, here. But if the cue ball would have been spotted here, I would have used completely different type of bridge. The closed rail bridge. In that case, I don't have enough place for open bridge because I don't have enough space to swing. Thus, I have to steer back on the rail, creating the closed rail bridge. In that case, the Q-stick is sliding on the rail and literally located under the bridge. Let's look at the proper way to use it. So, place the Q-stick right on the rail Place your palm right by the Q-stick without your index finger. Then cover the Q-stick with your index finger as if it is a lock. Right over the top. We can hold the rest of fingers like that or spread them wider if you feel comfortable. The bridge has three points of support. The middle finger, thumb joint and the index finger. That secures the Q-stick on the other side. The bridge is quite firm and stable, and if you learn how to use it, it's very comfortable. Another type of bridge is called the closed bridge. It's also very comfortable to use in the open field. This bridge has several advantages. This type of bridge is easier for those with more flexible fingers. Let's look at the proper way to set it up. Lay your palm and raise your index finger as high as possible. Spread other fingers and lean your thumb on the middle finger. Place the cue stick here, like on the shelf, and close the lock with your index finger. The best thing is that if your thumb and index finger will be under tension. Thus, we secure the acoustic very well that it is unable to swing left or right. And it secures its firm position very well. The advantage of the closed bridge is in that, that because it's closed on all of the sides, it secures the acoustic very well and the acoustic is unable to slip off or fall out in any way when you make a really strong shot. For example, strong shots are used in breaking. And if we will break with the open bridge, and with excessive force applied, it may kick off and we will not be able to hit the cue ball. Now I'll show you this in action. The most discomfortable situation for every player is when the cue ball is placed right by the rail. What can we do here? In fact, it's not much of a trouble. We just got to know to how to set up a bridge that we will play off the rail with. And the bridge is created as follows. We place the cue stick on the rail and put the open bridge under it. The bridge is mostly hanging here in the back. Thus we have enough space to execute the stroke. And doing it as if it's a regular shot. The most common mistake when the cue ball is on the rail is that beginners often place their hand on the rail and start aiming like that and climb down. This is fraught with two mistakes. 
The first is that you are unable to execute the full right shot because you are very short on stroke. And second, if you will not manage to hit the center of the cue ball and will play a little bit to the left or to the right, you'll instantly get the Masse and it will curve the cue ball to the side. Thus, you will not get the cue ball where you want. So, the right position here is as follows. The cue stick lays as parallel to the table as possible, literally on the rail. And you just place your arm like that from beneath. It's hanging off a bit and you can adjust the height. Pretty often we are forced to shoot along the rail. For example, like now, making the yellow ball. And in that case we will have to place our arm in such a way that it's partially on the field, partially on the rail. Well, the position is quite discomfortable. But here, if you pretend that your arm is a crab that is moving on stones, it will be pretty easy to place the hand. We will crouch on the rail until a certain point at which we feel comfortable to shoot. And perhaps the most discomfortable position is where we first to play over a wall. Because that bridge is the most unreliable. But the trouble is that mostly people set up this bridge like that. They place their fingers in one line close to each other. But the secret is that you have to lean on all of your four fingers. For more comfort, you can raise your thumb. Pay close attention that all of your four fingers must be under tension in order to provide maximum stability. Seek that most stable position, you can even bend your ring finger a little bit to the back. And here the gutter is created in a very interesting way. If you will press your thumb as hard as possible to the arm, then you have this muscle kit reason that along with the thumb, that creates that gutter that the cue stick will slide on. And other cases when you have position like that. For instance, we have 3 ball and 8 ball, and the cue will roll to that spot pretty close to the rail. The only solution to come out is to draw back straight. What we can do in that situation? Create the lifted bridge in order to provide a long stroke for all that, and place it that way on the rail. The peculiarity of this bridge is that the cue ball is located very close to the rail. But we have to perform a pretty long stroke in order to make a strong draw. So what to do? If we will place the bridge relatively close, we will not have space for the straw. Thus we have to move from the cue ball back as far as possible in order to get that desired space. Place the bridges that way that were described in that video. And it's not a big deal if they will differ due to our physiological differences. And the most important thing to remember is that the criteria for the good and correct bridge are stability and stiffness. Combined with the right stance and the right stroke, it will provide us with the ability to perfectly hit that point on the cue ball that we want. By the way, you can find these tutorials in the description to this video. My friends, if you enjoyed that tutorial, please like the video and share your results in the comments below. Or ask questions that I will answer with much pleasure. Subscribe to my channel and follow the releases of new pool tutorials. Wish you productive practice sessions. I'm Konstantin Stepanov. See ya!